Eternal Love, a Chinese drama. A magical weapon is created and then sent off to seek its own master. On its journey through various kingdoms, it finally arrived at Mount Kunlun. Fifteen Kunlun disciples set out to catch the weapon, but failed to obtain it. The god of war Mo Yuan, who is also the master of the Kunlun disciples, intervenes by using his own magic to take control of the magic fan. The fan begins to vibrate in Mo Yuan's hand and is then released by him again. Seeing this as a sign that he would get new disciples, he then followed the fan. A woman and a man came walking up to the gate of Kunlun Mountain. She then notices something glittering on Kunlun Mountain and tells the man about it. He then instructs her to investigate the matter. The unknown woman is Bai Qian, also known as Little Five. The man accompanying her is Jai Yan. God Jai Yan was sent by the fox emperor of Qing Chu, Bai Ji, to bring his troublesome daughter, a white nine-tailed fox, to Kunlun Mountain to become a disciple of Mo Yuan. Jai Yan then changes Bai Qian's appearance to that of a man and says Kunlun does not accept female disciples. Her new name will be Si Yin, a wild fox brought to Kunlun to be a disciple. They meet a man who is also waiting to become a disciple, Mo Shui Zi Lan. The magic weapon then flies to them and is seized by Si Yin without any resistance. Mo Yuan and his disciples then witness that the fan has chosen Si Yin as its new master. Mo Yuan immediately saw through Si Yin's disguise but did not reveal his identity. Si Yin introduces himself and adds that he is from the Ten Mile Peach Forest. Mo Yuan, fearing that such a powerful weapon might fall into the hands outside of Kunlun, decides to take Si Yin as a disciple into Kunlun, despite him being a woman. Si Yin hands Mo Yuan the magic weapon fan, which the latter accepts. When introducing the new disciples, Si Yin voiced his unfairness matter in which he always end up last. To make it fair, Mo Yuan then gave the fan to Si Yin as a consolation prize. At the end, Mo Shui Zi Lan became disciple 16 and Si Yin became disciple 17. When Seventeen asked what the fan's name would be, he was then told by Mo Yuan that it would be called Jade Ching Kunlun Fan. In Nine Heavens, Heavenly Lord Ruler, Tian Jun, could not believe what his first son, Yang Kuo, reported to him what just happened in Kunlun. Twenty thousand years later, Seventeen and Sixteen were visiting the mortal world. When Seventeen gave a woman in white her fortunes by telling she suffers in relationships, he was then scolded as rude by her servant. The woman she readed to was none other than goddess Yao Guang. Yao Guang then followed them on their return to Kunlun and discovered that Seventeen is actually Si Yin, Mo Yuan's favorite disciple, which left her jealous. Yao Guang then plotted revenge against Seventeen. Dai Feng, Mo Yuan's first disciple, comes to Seventeen and Sixteen's defense when they appeared in front of Mo Yuan for going to the mortal world without permission and causing trouble. Mo Yuan let the incident go for now and took Seventeen to the wine cellar to give him some peach wine, he collected from Jai Yan. Seventeen thanked him for the wine and for also remembering his birthday, Mo Yuan just smiled back at him. When walking back to his room with the peach wine, Seventeen was suddenly kidnapped. Seventeen wakes up in front of Yao Guang, his kidnapper, who wants to make him, her disciple. Seventeen refuses Yao Guang, who sends him to the water prison for three days. Meanwhile, the Kunlun disciples have been searching for Seventeen after Zhu Xi heard a noise and came across the broken wine bottles. They believe Seventeen must have been kidnapped because they all know that Seventeen loves drinking and would never let a bottle break. After the disciples went through the possible culprits, they concludes that it must be someone who knows Kunlun, which leads them to think that it might be Yao Guang. Goddess Yao Guang has recently moved her residence to Kunlun Mountain, hoping to be closer to Mo Yuan, whom she loves dearly. Mo Yuan is then notified that Seventeen is missing, after which they set out to visit Yao Guang.
Goddess Yao Guang went to see Seventeen again in prison. She told her maids to release Seventeen in one hour, to say some good words to him and ask him to leave Mo Yuan. As she was leaving, she was approached by Mo Yuan, who wanted to know if she has a disciple of him. Yao Guang, knowing that she is in trouble, tried to stop Mo Yuan from entering the prison. When he didn't want to stop she then pointed a sword at him. Mo Yuan overcomes the problem and then enters the prison to free his disciple. Seventeen then collapses in Mo Yuan's arms from fatigue and was then carried out by Mo Yuan. While carrying Seventeen, Yao Guang told Mo Yuan that she did all this to protect his reputation. He then replied that he would deal with her at the summit of Kangwu. Mo Yuan then took care of Seventeen for a while at his bedside. Yang Kuo visits Mo Yuan and persuades him not to fight Yao Guang because Qing Kang might use this division between the two gods to attack Nine Heavens. Mo Yuan told him that they should not worry about him and Yao Guang, for they can still count on their support if trouble arise between Spirit Tribe and Nine Heavens. Yang Kuo then reported all this back to his father, Tian Jun. God Mo Yuan and Goddess Yao Guang begin their fight at the summit of Kangwu. Yao Guang later admits defeat and the fight came to a stop. She was asked by Mo Yuan to leave Kunlun, and he also told her that they never had feelings and it was she who took it too seriously. After Seventeen awoken, he was then punished by having to copy the Changshu Bible 30,000 times and was also told that a woman was looking for him. The woman is Zan Nu, goddess Bai Zan's sister. Noticing Seventeen she quickly sees someone who resembles Bai Qian more than herself. Seventeen, knows Zan Nu from childhood and even allowed her to use magic to have the same face appearance as him when he was still Bai Qian's. Zan Nu then gave Seventeen a letter from god Bai Zhen, Seventeen's fourth brother. The brother asks Seventeen to host Zan Nu at Kunlun Mountain because she is fleeing an arranged marriage that she does not want to enter into. Seventeen also learns about God Bai Yi, Seventeen's second brother, who will soon become a father. Seventeen then wonders if Mo Zan would allow Zan Nu to stay in Kunlun Mountain. Mo Yuan agrees for Zan Nu to stay in Kunlun. Seventeen then puts Zan Nu up in a room next to his living area. Zan Nu comments on how much Si Yin looks like Bai Qian. Later, Seventeen, is standing by a pond and calls out to a golden lotus he has nicknamed, Jin Lian. He then tells him that he cannot take care of him for the time being, but will return to him as soon as possible when his punishment is complete. Seventeen then walks away, leaving the golden lotus to start glowing in the pond. <laughs>